Kuang Duong and I beat Ben and Colin Johns. How did we do it? Let's find out. And Christian Elshon have taken out the most dominant team in men's doubles in the world. Today we're going to be doing a match breakdown, something I've done many times before on how Kuang Duong and I beat Ben and Colin Johns in the PPA finals of the Bristol Open. Let's get into it. So, Kuang Duong and I are on the same MLP team, but this is the first time we're playing a PPA together. And PPA is different because there's a different scoring and there's a different positioning. So in MLP, you stay on your same side the whole time, even while returning. Whereas in PPA, you switch sides every serve. And if you're watching this point, you can see exactly, we win the point, which is awesome, but you can see exactly what Ben and Colin are trying to do from the get-go. They're hitting every single ball to Kwong. And because of that, this is what I do. Look at me. Because Kwong is getting every single ball, that means I can come over and kind of pinch the middle and, you know, bait my opponents to try and go behind me. So it, it's cool because if you're, part, if you're playing with somebody and your partner's getting picked on, it doesn't mean you're completely helpless and you just have to stand and just be like, okay, good luck. You can do something about it. It doesn't mean you need to come over and take their ball, but what you can do is you can help your partner out by creeping over to their side and making your opponent's target much smaller. And that's exactly what I do here. So if Ben and Colin hit the ball in the middle, I'm right there. Look at where I'm standing. So they have to hit a very good dink or else there's no point. Or maybe I can even attack a dead, a dead dink. So they, they can't really do much in the middle. If they go too far out wide, uh, Kwong can hit an easy ATP. I say easy relatively. So their only real option or target is a small spot right here. And that leads to a, re see, right, right there. That's all they can do. And that leads, leads to a relatively dead dink, which allows us to do a lot with. Right there, Kwong sped it up. And I'm still standing middle and I'm on the counter. So I think that's a, I think that's a cool first point to kind of show what this match is gonna be about. Our opponents are targeting Kwong, uh, same, same as they've done before, but we have a strategy and we stick to it. So yeah. this is another good point to show what Kwong and I are trying to do this match. As you can see, the return lands in the middle and without hesitating, I'm, I know that Kwong and I have talked about this and he's going to be taking this ball so that I can move forward. I mean, let me slow this down. As he makes contact, I'm already two or three steps, I mean two steps into the kitchen. So what I can do is I can, in theory, crash this next one. Uh, I don't because I'm ready to, look where I'm standing. I'm ready to take everything in the middle, but Colin does a good job of getting it away from me. It's hard to go behind me on that ball, so this is a very, very smart play in today's pickleball world. And I could have maybe, so you see this one, this is, this is interesting. This next shot right here, I could have maybe taken it, but he hits it low. And if I take that, I'm gonna be hitting it low to high, which means either Colin or Ben can just put away the next one. So what I do is I leave that because I know even though I'm at the net, that doesn't mean I need to take that ball. I'm just there applying pressure. I'm there ready for the put away or the high ones, or if they hit it at me, then I got it. So here I let this ball go straight to, and Q does a good job of getting it down. We move in and we end up winning the point. Colin speeds it up, doesn't work out. So here's the very next point. Let's see what happens. Same thing, boom, right there, right there. I mean, could it be a better example of a drive and crash? Our opponents return middle again, as you'll see, and even though retur they're returning middle, my job is to move in and cover, and then pinch middle, and I hit a winner of a shot. So, from the, from, from the very beginning, we knew that this was a winning, winning strategy, regardless of who they return to, because both Kwong and I are quick and we can trust each other to get to the net and be big. We lost the point, but I'm gonna let Kwong take the middle dink just because off the bounce, I think right now Kwong does a better job. Usually the left side, the forehand does a better job off the bounce in the middle. So I'm, I'm letting Kwong take the middle. 
but I'm really trying to get in and I'm trying to play. So this is what happens. The second I see a ball that's even net height, I look to be aggressive. And I mean, you can see the spot I hit. I hit a good spot on Ben. He's ready for the backhand and he last second covers the forehand uh, and hits a great shot. We end up losing the point because they're a good team, but no sweat. You see this next point, let's watch it. The same, the same thing. I want you to focus on what makes me go to the middle. So Ben hits a dink cross court. Then here's Q all the way out here. He's going to roll this cross court. And he if he rolls this cross court, it's very hard for Ben to speed up behind me a ball that's moving away from him. He'd have to hit a perfect shot. So after, after uh, Q hits this cross court, Ben, it's too low for Ben to take out of the air. I'm already, see the ball's on the ground and I'm moving to the middle. I'm looking for a ball in the middle. And there again, I take a ball about net height. And since Ben's a little bit off balance from the first shot, there's a good spot I can go. And I go through the middle and it works. Let's keep going. Q hits a great third. So we lose this point again, but as you can see, I'm moving in, I'm moving in. And even though they go behind me, I can still cover it because it's hard to go behind somebody on the forehand, especially off of drive. Because if it's a drive, that means most likely if my partner drives it, it's going to be hard for them to get down on it and hit it low unless Kwong's drive is high, which you'll see is can be a problem. So if your partner hits a good third, a good drive low, you can really just stand in the middle of the court and have a little, not that much risk. Cause if they come hard at you, just be ready for it to come right at you. It's gonna be hard for them to go behind you. If they go to the open court, which is your partner, you can let them take that. So we end up losing this point, no sweat. Uh, yeah. Short return. Kwong drives and crashes his own ball. So I mean, it's nice, nice play by him. So I want you, I want you to look at this point and see the difference between Ben and I, or Ben and Colin and Kwong and I. If you can see it in the very, very first couple shots. So Ben takes the third, the same spot that they've been returning to us, relative middle, and they're both just staying back completely. And what they do is they slowly move in. They just stay there, they hit a drop, and they move in and they get into the point. There's nothing wrong with that. That's actually a very good play, but they, but this is a team that's doing that over and over again, which means that they're not getting any free points in that area, whereas Kwong and I are getting a lot of free points in that area. Let's watch this point. You can see that here I am, I'm gonna go back. You can just like, you can just see every time Kwong hits the ball cross court, I'm looking for that middle. Like I'm looking to take that middle ball. I did not hit the best shot there, but it's okay, it worked out. I let Kwong take the middle dinks as he should. And then Ben misses a, Ben misses an ATP. I mean, it's a great point of showing that even if you're not playing, you can still have a vital role in pickleball. So I just brought this up. Here's the risk of driving and crashing in pickleball. Okay, we, we lost this point, which is kind of crazy, but I should be looking to move middle and Ben was able to get the third down, which means if I'm hitting a ball that's low, unless I hit it soft or right at the person's body, it's going to be high and probably easy for my opponent to put away. Ben has an easy put away, <clears throat> clips the tape and it goes out. We get a little lucky there. It's a big point. It was a huge point. We got an actual point off that. And that's that goes back to what I was talking about just a few points ago. Uh, even though it wasn't like, you, that goes back to what I was talking about a few points ago. Even though it wasn't 
perfect in the execution, we're still applying pressure. So like we're forcing them to, you know, make big plays that they like quickly. Whereas when they're returning, they slowly move in, not applying that much pressure early on. So even if Ben does get a high ball, see, I kind of noticed that this one was high. And since it was high and not low, I'm ready for it to come at me. And since I'm ready for it to come at me, he hits it right, I'm, I'm kind of expecting it before he hits it, or I can see that he's about to hit it. And I'm ready, I counter it well. Big point, big point. So if the ball would have bounced low, and if Ben would have let it bounce, I would have been looking to, to go into the middle, to pinch the middle. Uh, but since he took it out of the air, I was ready for it. Okay, so the, this point is the moment we've all been waiting for. So far in this match, I've been doing a good job of really just standing in the middle and taking over the middle. So you guys are, you guys are like, it's pretty obvious, go behind me, like go behind me. And in this point, you will see them do that. Uh, right here, Huang hits a great drop and I'm ready for, I'm ready to close the middle because the ball's bouncing, but the drop bounces up a little bit and he hits a great shot. So let's go back, we can watch this in slow-mo, maybe slow-mo is cool. So right here, Huang hits a drop. I see that it's gonna be a good drop, I move in but the ball gets a little too high and Ben's able to get down on it. Whereas when we're dinking, the ball doesn't get that high, so I don't have to worry about them going behind me as much. This is a cool point to watch. Fong's an animal, look at that. The way we go from defense to offense, right there with one shot. Fong, this, this was interesting as I was watching it. So before, both Fong and I have been hitting Ben's chicken wing, like, you know, that's the spot on the right hip. Here, I gotta, right here. Since, since, that, since we've been going to one spot, you can look at Ben twitch a little bit. He's ready for it to come here, but it goes, it goes to his backhand, which causes him not to be able to get down on it, and then Q puts it away very nicely. And that's why when you're playing pickleball, it's so important to change up your spot. It's so important, because if somebody speeds up to me once, I'm kind of ready for that same spot. If somebody goes there twice, the next time I'm just like, this person's going here. Because the information you have is that they've gone, say they've sped up here twice. It's likely that they're gonna speed up here a third time unless I'm given, unless I'm given information otherwise. So if they go twice here, once here, once here, twice here, when they get a ball, I'm gonna have no idea which shoulder they're going to because somebody's mixed it up so well. So make sure you're make, mixing up your shots, super important. Here's game point. When we need to, Kwong and I can slowly move in. And that's been the recipe of this game is Kwong hitting backhand rolls cross court. Ben's off the bounce, just because if it bounces here and Ben's hitting it behind him, there's no way he can pass me down the line. It's just, there's no way, because if he goes down the line, I'm gonna be there because it's half a step. So that means I can stand in the middle and be ready for the high ones because Kwong hit a dink back here, he's not gonna be able to get there as quickly as I can. And I use the reach that I have, thank you mom and dad, and we win a game, that's huge. This is the finals. Ben and Colin, I sh they showed a statistic on when I was watching the stream. They're 17 and one in f championship Sunday finals since 2023. So in the last two years or so, they're 17 and one. And the one time they lost was to J.W. and Dylan and Colin was injured, he injured his ankle. Uh, and that was the one time they lost. So beating them in the finals is kind of unprecedented. Even though they haven't been doing as well lately, that's still 
it's still a lot of pressure to win this match, and it's... We made that game look easy, to be honest, because usually it's almost impossible to beat these guys on Sunday. All right, let's get into game two. As you can see, they're doing the same thing, minus that ball, but they're hitting most of the shots too cute. They gave me one, and then Colin decided to, uh, they gave me a ball here, which is good, because since, you know, they dink behind me, now I gotta move over here, and I can't just stand here. Colin tries to speed up to Kwong. You can see Kwong doesn't need to stand in the middle, because I'm covering so much middle, which helps my partner. Like, you can see where Ben is standing. If I would have gotten, I'm, I'm curious right here. So right here, I get a ball out wide and you see where Ben's standing. If I want to speed up here, it's kind of open. Whereas I'm the right side player. And if I have a ball here, I could maybe speed up there. And now Colin, the right side player, has a ball out wide and you see where Kwong's standing. He's much more on, he's like a whole step closer to covering that line and he's on it because I can cover middle for him. And I think that's the future of pickleball is having two players that really complement each other and not just one major alpha player like pickleball has been for the last while. Here's another good point. We drive and crash, but it doesn't work out. Boom. So this is what I've been preaching the whole time. Kwong, Q, hits a back end roll cross court. And since it's so low, I mean, that was a beautiful dink. I mean, look at, look at the positioning of Ben right here. Like he is about to fall over from a, from a dink. Like Q, great job. Uh, and look where I'm standing. So like anything that goes in the middle, I'm gonna try and speed up through the middle, through their middle. And he goes down the line, which is very smart because I'm so far over. Do you see how far over I am? But even though he goes down the line, he, since, since it was a good dink, it doesn't matter that he goes down the line. I take half a step and I'm there and it's my forehand. And since Kwong hit such a good dink, I could speed it up for a winner. This was a really fun match to play. It's probably one of my favorite matches of all time, to be honest. Makes sense. <laughs> this might be my favorite match of all time. You can see the positioning. And again, again, once I realize that, cause Kwong's trying to be smart with his dinks, but you know, not everything can be perfect. And if he does hit a dink a little high, I can see that's going high. And I know if I know it's high, I know I need to be ready for a defensive maneuver, not an offensive maneuver. So right there, you can see as I, I can tell he's taking it out of the air and I'm ready for it. And I counter as a winner. And we go up 8-2 in the second. So what we've noticed about the last two speed ups that hit on me is they were both to my left hip area, which I'm very ready for because that's where my paddle is. Uh, here we're going to see Ben go for my right hip, right there, off the bounce. Ben does not speed up off the bounce too much. And he hits my right hip, and I'm still ready for it. And then he hits a phenomenal shot. I couldn't even believe that he took that out of the air. Uh, good point, good point. But here's an entertaining point. That's probably one of the only risks with Q's dink cross court is since he hits so much spin on it, we lose this point, but since he hits so much spin on his dink, it really allows the opponents to uh, hit an ATP. You, you see how much spin there is? It didn't land here, which if you, if you hit a ball and it lands here, then it usually comes off the court for an ATP. That ball landed around here and gave Ben a, not an easy ATP, but a makeable one. I'm like leaning, but I'm reaching behind me. It's hard for me to get that down. 
so I just get it in. And I mean, the second one of our one of us are close to the net and an opponent has a high ball, you should say your prayers because it's probably not going to be good. But we turn defense to offense real quick. Uh, and then they turn defense to offense and they win. Cool point, cool point all around. Let's watch this point. Let's see if you can see what happens. It's interesting because watching this, it's the strategy from both teams are very clear. Rewatching it. Like they're hitting every ball to Ben. No, they're, they're hitting every ball to Q. And I'm just trying to be in the middle to help Q out and you know, because if they hit every ball out wide to Q and then Q also has to cover the middle, they can move him around so much that it's gonna be tough for us. Uh, so, but here, here we go. They're dinking and since I'm standing in the middle and I've been doing it a lot, Ben tries to redirect the shot behind me, which is awesome if I'm standing over here and I let it bounce. But luckily, I just don't think it was that good of a shot. Plus my reach, it's my forehand, put it away. Easy, easy winner. If Ben would have taken this ball, I just, I just know that it's a little high so that I can't, and if it's a little high, I can't be aggressive through the middle like I want to. So I'm ready for it to come at me. If he would have hit that and it bounced right here, it would have been a very good shot. Uh, yeah. So here's, here's a risk with the driving crash. We haven't seen a, one of these points in a while, but Yeah, this is a pretty bad point for me. Uh, Q takes the third as he should. I think the problem is they returned, they returned very well. And usually, see usually by this point, I need to be here. I'm back here. So when Q hits it, I'm still at the baseline. I need to be up here uh, or else they, they can just go down on it. And what happens is he's a great shot but now, instead of being right at the kitchen, you know, big in the kitchen, I'm like kind of forced into my side. Ben hits a high ball that usually I, that's not that high of a ball, but Ben hits a ball that usually I could take it's above the net. Uh, and since I, you know, made, I made a mistake, which affected my following shot, because here's a ball I shouldn't take, and I take, and we lose the point. And I think this, this point just really shows that confidence is, is key. Because I had a lack of confidence after making a mistake or just moving in, there wasn't the confidence. And you need that, you need that to like win. So right now, so right now we're up 8-5. Uh, we were up 8-2 and they're making a little bit of a comeback. They're serving. I wanna show this point at 8-5. I miss a return. You can't miss a return. It was probably because I also lost the previous point. Uh, I forget what it was, but I, I just missed an easy shot. So here we go, my fault. I've lost a few points for us. Uh, and against a team like this, you can't, you can't do that. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta switch back. You gotta turn it on as soon as you can. If there's a lapse of focus, it's gonna happen. You can't expect yourself to play perfect an entire match. Uh, so even after making a few mistakes, let's see. I think six, eight, one. Yeah. And often what happens is if you make some mistakes then now your partner feels the pressure to maybe do a little bit more and they're more likely to make mistakes. So here we go. Uh, we kind of change our positioning here. Usually I'm more middle and Kwong's a little bit more covering line. And I pull him out and Colin hits a good shot. Kwong's not there. It's the same play that happened earlier. We just, I think, I think just a little bit lack of confidence and lack of positioning in play. 
So 7-8, Ben and Colin are coming back. We were up 8-2. Uh, let's see what happens here. Big point. We go for an Ernie. And Q just absolutely cleans up. What an animal. That was a huge point. Let's watch it again. So I, I, I'm covering the line again. I mean, Ben does a good job of going behind me. But it's tough. I mean... I'm trying to like take that shot away. I'm trying to take away the middle. I'm trying to take away the line. I don't hit the best shot, but I don't hit the worst shot. And now that this get right there was beautiful from Q. He does a great job of being a left side animal and cleaning it up. So here you can see that Q and I uh, are, st or that I stay back after Q hits the third. I think I did this because it was a good return and we had been struggling to win some points getting to the net uh, and the crash wasn't really working, which may happen. So what I wanted to do on our serve is just, you know, make sure we get to the kitchen. So I stay back, he comes to me. If I'm here, if I'm closer, that's gonna be a lot tougher of a shot. But since I stayed back, I was able to just drop it in and move slowly in. It's kind of contradicting what I've been saying about crashing, but like, just have variety in your game. Don't let your opponent know exactly what you're gonna do. Like if, if your opponent knows what your strategy is, what your plan is, you're in a bad position. So by kind of the best, as much as you can mix it up, I think that's a good thing. Big point, great shot from Q. I decided to take a middle ball. I'm really looking to be aggressive. Boom. So once again, once again, I mean, we saw the same exact pattern happen where Kwong hits a great cross court dink. Ben looks like he's about to fall over. Ben dinks it down the line, which is smart because he has a lot of room right here to dink. He has a lot of room right there to dink, but the only problem is it's gonna be a dead dink, which we can see. And with a dead dink, I feel very comfortable speeding up. So I speed up. My foot was on the line with that speed up. Man, a millisecond, I put that foot back. I'm ready. Kwong cleans up. Big point, 9-7. So, I mean, I don't, I don't mind this from Ben and Colin. I think it's a little late. They have not been aggressive off the bounce. Like, very seldomly they have. Uh, and here we go, we see a chance, Ben gets a high ball. He's a great, he's, he speeds it up. Kwong's ready for it, put it away. I mean, in this moment, it just seems like what can Ben and Colin do? Like they're trying to be steady, which is their game plan, which we don't want to play. And we're doing a really good job of not playing to their strengths, to playing to our strengths. And that causes Ben, we just won the game off of a missed return. But that causes Ben to now, or that causes our opponent to speed up or maybe do something they normally wouldn't do. Uh, hold up, I lost my train of thought. That causes our opponent to, you know, play into our game, which is exactly what we want. Or to, you know, anyway, we, we won that game, huge win. That missed return on game point was huge. Just being able to get like a free game. If you miss a return on game point, you do not want to do that. It's, you basically just give your opponents the game for free, uh, which was huge for us. Uh, so now we're at 11-7, 11-7. Hey, if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel. It would mean a lot to me. Like this video. Uh, also, if you like this kind of instructional content, you're gonna love my newsletter. I send it out every week with uh, just the latest coaching advice that I have, instructional tips, inside info, and all that, all that's been going on lately. So make sure you subscribe to the newsletter. On top of that, if you don't know, I give away one free paddle every month to somebody who subscribes to the newsletter and the YouTube. You gotta subscribe to both. So do that if you wanna be eligible for a paddle. Thanks for watching, let's get it, let's get back into it. So here we go, start of game three. Whew. Q attacks a, a low ball, which 
works out. He goes to the spot on Colin that Colin was kind of ready for. A little bit lucky, but I like the aggressive style. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make him play our game. That was just a good point all around. I mean, Q and I have been doing what we've been trying to do the whole time. There was one point where I came in, like I came all the way over. No, I came all the way over and took a ball right here. I remember Lee telling me to be even bigger in the middle. Uh, so I came all the way here to take a ball. I think I hit a good shot. Ben, like I hit it at Ben's feet and he passed the kitchen. That's a good ball. That's a good ball. If you're making somebody hit a dink past the kitchen and it bounces past the kitchen, that's a great shot. Uh, but he does a good job of going to getting it down to my forehand. I'm used to speeding up, speeding it up to his backhand. So I go there. He counters very well. I'm ready for the counter. I hit the net cord. I think it would have been better if I didn't hit it. Call and resets and we're back in the point. Uh, that dink right there is something that it's super hard that he wasn't doing. Like we had the same pattern in the first game a ton where Q hits it right here, Ben dinks here, but usually it sits up a lot. He got that dink super low, which is just a very hard shot to hit. So he's got to hit that shot. Uh, and the thing is, even if he hits it, it's at no, it's at no risk to us. So we're in a good position. And then a little bit of miscommunication at the end to lose the point. It's all good. So here we go, Ben and Colin have a little bit of a lead. 2-1, it's early. Q hits a nice little flick. Then I hit a nice little flick. I thought that was a fun point. Kwong was about to hit this shot. And yeah. Just click play right now. So there have been some loose errors for us to go down 4-1 in the third, but I just wanted to show this point because it's a big point and <laughs> there we go. Here, I'm going to slow this down. Look at this counter. <laughs> Look at Colin just stand there. That was a crazy shot. That was a crazy shot. Moving forward, we get a couple of missed returns. Thank you for that. And then here, great shot from Q. Boom, ATP. So this is the first opportunity that I've had to hit an ATP. So, and you can also notice that Colin's standing a little bit more in the middle now. I think they're just trying to change it up. I think it's good, they, they need to change something. Uh, but he gives me an ATP, and on the forehand, I'm very comfortable hitting a hard ATP. So I hit it well, and I mean, this was the first and last ATP I got all match, and whereas Ben has hit like four or five, uh, cause Q hits a big roll out there. But the thing is, we can keep doing that like every now and then because Ben will miss it uh, because it's a lot harder to hit an ATP on the backhand side unless you're Connor Garnett. Uh, so it's a lot harder to hit a backhand ATP because you got to get, because uh, you usually only hit it with one hand and you can't get that much power. Uh, yeah. Moving on. Moving on. We, we got the score back to 4 4. We got a couple misreturns like I said and then right here just a bad shot by me uh, you can see on this dink it comes from the middle and both Q and I don't really know who's supposed to take that and you can see it it lands closer to me uh, but Q I mean he's right he's right there too I think it was a good spot by Ben and Colin to hit on us, uh, to try and, you know, kind of like make us fight over that middle. Especially, especially if I'm standing in the middle, take advantage of when I'm not standing in the middle and hitting it there. Uh, so we kind of we miscommunicate there, which leads me to 
get a low ball that I would usually just dink because it's a little low to speed up. I could have sped it up, but after the miscommunication, you know, the confidence isn't there and confident, confidence, confidence is so key uh, that I hit like a semi speed up. I was trying to like, I was so disappointed in myself. Uh, I'm trying to like off speed it through the middle to like set us up for our next one. If I would have made it, it could have been a good shot, but it's just the confidence was not there. Here's a big point. We're now down 6-4, they're serving. So after that miss that I had, I think I missed another shot and it's a carryover, which is not good. Uh, right here, good return. And there's a high ball and both Kwong and I go for it. But since Kwong was already at the net and he's the left side guy, he does a great job of just hitting that with authority. like coming over and knowing that I'm there and still being like, no, like I should take this. Even if it's like, even if you make a bad decision in pickleball, if you do it and you do it with authority, like it's better than hitting a good shot in pickleball and like not really being comfortable with it. It's, and that's why some people, yeah, no, let's not go into that. Uh, so he takes that first ball, puts away the next one. Huge, huge point for us. Uh, Cause we're down six, four. We want to keep it close. Nice put away. So here it's four, six, we're serving. Uh, Kwong hits a great, great third. I poach and Ben misses this. Just nice point all around. So we get it back to six all right here. And this is a big point. Uh, Cause in this game, Q and I have had a couple communication issue, issues, nothing serious, but right there, like working out who's gonna take that middle. And what I was just talking about hitting it with authority, I like Q goes to hit that one, hit this thing. I'm like, all right, he's taking it. This next one, I'd rather us not miscommunicate on it. So I'm like, I'm hitting this thing. Like, I'm gonna push him out of the way to hit this thing. Like he, he was like going to set up for it. And you know, if I'm about to hit it and I see he's about to set up and I'm like, oh wait, should I not hit it? I'll miss it or one of us will miss it. This way I see it coming. I don't care what's happening. I'm like, I'm hitting this thing, which is exactly what I do. Uh, and that's what you need to do, finding, getting that middle shot. Like knowing which one, who's gonna take it when. Both. Just pointing out both Colin and I, Colin should have sped that up, it was super high. And I could have sped that up, it was super high, which is just, it's funny. Uh, this is a big point, six all. At this point, every point's a big point. Boom, speed up through the middle. I've taken this speed up to Ben's backhand a lot and you can see he's kind of ready for the backhand. And then he thinks it's going out, it lands in. Big point from us. Here we go, big poach. So this is a really important thing to notice that six all, Kwong and I are playing our same uh, style game. I probably could have been closer, but we're, we've been talking about the topic of just confidence and hitting it with authority. Kwong hits that shot and in my mind, I'm poaching. Like I'm going to be big, I don't care what happens. So I, I go to be big. Uh, I could have let it go since it was low and I could have let Kwong hit it uh, and just made it back. If I miss this shot, that's exactly what I would be saying right now. But since I don't miss it, I'm not saying that. So I go, I don't hit the best shot, but just since I'm being big in the middle, Colin's backing up. So he hits this ball a little bit on his back foot, which gives me a high ball to put away. Let's watch it in real time. So I don't hit the best shot. This best, I don't hit a great first volley. I, like I hit it pretty high actually, but just, just the act of me moving in is applying so much pressure that me coming forward is causing them to go back. And that's better for, for us. Boom. And that was big for us to get a point at six all. So seven, seven, two, it's a big point right here. These seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine points are just so important. It's these points that win matches. And you can see that here I am 
Q and I are both trying to be aggressive. I actually attack through the middle here and Ben does a really good job of countering it. And they're on the offense, we're on the defense, but Q resets well. This is interesting right here. So Ben gets a high ball here that he would usually speed up to. He would usually speed up. But throughout the match, I've been on that counter attack. And in this moment, because you know I've countered like a few of them pretty well, he's less inclined to go for that. And that's good with me because I'd rather in a point like this that I'm the one being the aggressor and I'm the one making those moves than my opponent. So just it's the little things like that that really do add up. And then boom, we work the point. Look, I'm standing pretty far in the middle. I'm trying to get another high ball in the middle that I can speed up. Kwong just hit a great ball cross court, not far enough for Ben to ATP. And the second I see that he's really turned and I notice that he might be going line, I don't even need to take a step. I can just jump from the middle of the court and do an ATP. Big point, big point. So 7-7, seven, seven, we're serving. Ben dinks it behind me, smart. Right here. So that one, Ben's able to get the ATP. We stay in it. And then th this was my fault. I hit, I hit a ball right here that I should not be going for. I mean, look at that. Like, Kwong's behind me, he's ready to hit it. And I like lean in front of him to take it. Uh, and I think that was because I had a solid ATP defense. And after hitting some good shots, you're like, oh, this is like, oh, like I want to hit another one. You want that ball in your paddle after you hit a couple of good shots. I know we all know what that feels like. 7-7, seven, seven, we don't win this point. Ben and Colin are serving on their one. This was a funny point. We call it out. We get overturned and then we challenge the overturn as kind of like a timeout. Because even if you even if you lose the challenge, you still get to use your timeout. Uh, so we did that, which I thought was pretty effective. And I mean, right here, you can see. This is where it bounces, or I think it bounced like right here. And as it's bouncing, look at me, look at my head. I'm looking forward. I mean, Ben hit that so hard. Kwong has a little bit better, better view, but still tough. It's tough to make your own line calls. And, I think we're gonna have to be doing it for a while in pickleball. So they won that point, but it was a good timeout because right out of the gate, we get a point. And that's a big point right there. Uh, so now they're serving a seven, two. Try and be aggressive. I don't think that was the best time for me to be aggressive and we lose the point, so. But I like being aggressive. We don't wanna dink with them in these important points like that's just not what we want to do we, we will dink when we have to but we don't want to you know start that they push us back they get a good point so they played a solid handful of points i think kwong and i are out of timeouts which is the negative of using one for a timeout uh but now we're serving Let's see what happens Kwong hits it a little high, not too, not too bad. Uh, and then Ben does a really good job of getting it behind me. And as I'm crashing, like that's smart, but Kwong did hit it high. All right, here we go. It's 7-7. Seven, seven. I don't know, it's 7-10-2. Uh, it's this is a team, Ben and Colin, that have gone 17-1 and one in finals in the last two years this is not this is a team you don't want to go five games with in the finals this is a game this is a team that you don't want to go four games with in the finals you you want to shut them out right away you you don't want to give them a chance to get back into it they're a good team they'll fight and you just and that, that, that's that's how i was feeling in the moment i was like they're up 10-7 we got to win this game. We got to win now. Like there's no, there's, there's just no way I want to make this go four or five. Like that's bad news for us. Cause if they win the third game, then they have the momentum right now. Kwong and I have had the momentum this whole 
match. And if we lose this game, they'll have the momentum, which is huge, which is huge. So let's see what happens, Seven ten. These points are so big right here. This is the point. This is the point that wins us the match. If you could break it down to one point, I would break it down to this point. Uh, and no, it's not because of me. Right here. Boom. What a get. I mean, I pop it up. Huang is out of frame. Like, and he gets a perfect shot. Ben's frustrated. I'm hyped. Huang's just happy to be here. That's... Look at that. Let's watch this. This is... Look at the way he's hitting that. Like, he... That's so impressive. And then... This is exactly like it... Uh, this is exactly the spot that I hit my tweener against Jack Sock and Leia Jansen. Right through the middle. Leia didn't go for it. Jack was, like, thinking it was Leia's ball. And the same thing happens here. Colin doesn't go for it. Ben's thinking it's... Colin's ball, Ben's upset at Colin, and you'll see that because of that last point, watch what happens here. Just a routine miss, and it's not even at the top, it wasn't even, it was even a close miss, it was just a bad miss, and that's a carryover. That shot carried over from the last point, so. Here we go, 9-10. What happens here? Yeah, I try to uh, attack Colin, and this is what I've been preaching. We want to be aggressive when we can. Colin was not ready for it. He got the craziest get I've ever see seen, though. Look at this. Look at this get by him. He, like, catches it and releases it. That, that's absurd. And then Ben goes for a shot. That's not smart by any, by any means, and he misses it. Uh, 10 all. So right now, they should take a timeout. And timeouts are so valuable, it would help them so much to take a timeout here. But they don't, uh, which is, which I'm, I'm more than stoked for. Uh, let's go back to the start of this point. Right here, this is, the, this is what we've been doing all match. Huang takes the third. I move, I try and get big in the middle, and I hit Ben's chicken wing. And I'm getting that ball. We have our first match point. I'm like, let's do this quick. Let's keep the momentum going. Let's not give him time to take a timeout. Ben misses a return. Look at that. Oh, man. <laughs> That's awesome. What a shot. What a shot. Uh, I mean, my, guy's, my guy Q is lighter than he looks. Uh, and he looks pretty light, but... This has got to be the best feeling match I've ever played. It's got to be the best, my favorite match, uh, to be honest. I mean, it's the finals of a tournament winning gold against the best team of all time. Like, that, it was sensational. I mean, it was such a good feeling and it was crazy. It's so hard. It's so hard to win a tournament just because... There's usually a team, like one or two teams that are just so much better than every other team. And, man, anyway, anyway, thank you guys for watching. Uh, this week, I was super happy to do a match breakdown on a match I won, but next week I will be breaking down the mixed finals of the Bristol PPA where Anna Bright and I play Ben and Anna Lee. That match I have a little bit less fun than this one, but I think it's important to, because when you watch matches that you lose, you can figure out what you need to change to get better. Whereas when you watch matches that you win, you kind of just see what you did that was good and keep doing that. You can, all, you can always build on it. I don't think it's bad to watch your wins. I think it's Mentally, it's better to watch your wins than it is your losses, but you can learn more from the bad losses. Uh, I haven't watched it yet, but I'm super excited to watch it, to see what we could have done better and just, you know, try and get better. I mean, that's all, that's all that we're trying to do is trying to get a little bit better every time. And, you know, the little bit better every day compounds and it really does compound. And that's 
what being an athlete's all about. Uh, that's what I'm all about. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, this is by far the longest video I've ever had. If you made it this far until the end, you're 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 part of the squad. You're part of the gang. Uh, so. No, if, if you made it this far, you're part of the family. So thank you so much. And until next time, peace.